Have you noticed sports broadcasts looking more and more like video games recently? What's going on here? Why do these shots feel so, so different, so crisp? What's going on behind the scenes that's blending video games and real life? Today, we're gonna look at a few reasons why sports broadcasts are looking more and more like video games. And we're gonna talk about a few reasons that you may have already heard that might not be true. Let's get into it. In 2020, reports came out that the NFL was adopting new 8K resolution cameras to use for on-field shots. The results looked incredible and fans were blown away. Have you seen this NFL 8K footage? Oh my God. However, these reports weren't quite accurate. Yes, in 2020, the NFL did change their on-field camera setup. Traditionally, they were using a very large, heavy broadcast camera that cost tens of thousands of dollars, and they were using very huge Steadicam rigs to operate these to run out on the field for touchdown celebrations. And yes, in 2020, this did change. The cameras and the rigs themselves were downsized. The big rigs and the huge broadcast cameras were ditched, and they were replaced with a much much smaller setup that if you've been watching videos on this channel, you might be familiar with. The NFL started using a Sony mirrorless camera, the Sony A7R Mark IV. And as a Steadicam, they switched over to the DJI Ronin, a handheld gimbal that is much cheaper and much lighter than the huge broadcast Steadicams of the past. Now, this is gear that I'm using all the time in my own videos. Right now I'm using a Sony mirrorless camera, the a7 III, not far off from the a7R Mark IV. And I use the DJI Ronin RS3 all of the time. I've got videos about it here on the channel as well. So this is a much smaller, much more accessible rig. So why is it looking so much more lifelike, realistic, video game-like? Well, let's discuss that. So you're telling me that a camera setup that you could purchase at home is making this footage look so good? Well, yes, quite frankly, that camera setup is very similar to the setup I'm using right now. But to blow your mind even further, all these reports about this new 8K NFL footage, well, they were wrong. The Sony a7R Mark IV can only shoot up to a 4K resolution. 8K is not possible to film on these cameras. And on top of this, when the 4K footage was sent to broadcast via a live stream, the footage was actually down to 1920 by 1080p. So not only were we not talking 8K footage, we weren't talking 4K footage either. We're talking your standard 1920 by 1080. So there's really no difference between this camera and the older broadcast cameras? Well, not exactly. These mirrorless cameras, the evolution of DSLR cameras, have two unique settings. First, and most importantly, these cameras allow for a very shallow depth of field. Now, this is the main reason why people are thinking that this footage looks video game-like. A shallow depth of field is gonna create a very small portion of your shot that's in focus. Much like how right now my face is in focus and the background falls out of focus, well, the shallower that depth of field gets, the more narrow the amount that's in focus gets. So you might not get the full part of my head, maybe just my nose and everything else falls out. Well, these cameras on the sidelines are having a very shallow depth of field. So you'll see the player in focus and the rest of the shot is out of focus. This is a look that's traditional to video games and cinematic films. It's not something we're normally seeing in sporting events. In sports, you wanna have all of the action in focus. You don't wanna have a huge play that's gone out of focus or gone blurry. You try to keep everything in focus so you're not using a shallow depth of field. So when we see this in a sports context on a live broadcast, our minds quickly go to where we've seen this before, video games. Now, it's not just the shallow depth of field that's creating these video game comparisons. These mirrorless cameras have another function that they can do to change the look of the shot. They have an adjustable shutter speed or shutter angle. And this is what causes the crispness of motion in some of these 8K shots. I want you to think about an action sequence in a movie like Gladiator. This is a movie that famously used a high shutter speed for action sequences to create a jittery and jarring motion sequence. Typical broadcast cameras are gonna film with a shutter speed that's roughly double their frame rate. So in the United States, televisions broadcast at 30 frames per second or 29.97 frames per second. So they use a shutter speed that's somewhere around one over 60. 
And these Sony mirrorless cameras are actually gonna crank that up to be a lot faster than 1 60th of a second. They're gonna use something more like one over 200th of a second. And this creates a much crisper image. Motion blur becomes much less smooth when you're filming at these higher shutter speeds. Any action or movement looks jittery, it looks crisp, it looks jumping and jerky. Now, the reason that this looks like a video game is because video games also don't have as smooth motion blur as you might see in a typical video. And the reason for this is that motion blur requires heavy rendering of computers or whatever it is that's creating those motion graphics in the video game. So you end up actually getting that similar jittery, jerky footage that we're now seeing with the high shutter speed. Now, what might've caused this switch in cameras? Now, one theory behind this switch of cameras for broadcasters has to do with the time at which this popped up. In 2020, when this camera rig was swapped from the big boys over to the small mirrorless cameras, there were no fans in the stands at games. So there wasn't much to look at outside of the players. So by using a smaller, a shallower depth of field, you were focused more as a viewer on the player and the stands kind of fell off out of focus, they were blurred out. So you wouldn't really be looking at who might have been in the seats or what was going on or how much of a crowd was there. So that's one theory as to why this shift might have taken place, to draw the viewer away from the empty stands and focus specifically on the players on the field. In addition, these rigs are way cheaper. Again, the huge broadcast cameras and the massive steady cams are gonna cost tens of thousands of dollars, whereas a DJI Ronin and a Sony mirrorless camera might cap out at $5,000 for one entire rig build. So all in all, it made a lot of sense to jump into this futuristic 8K camera setup, and I think that fans are loving it. Now, not only have cameras improved, but the rigs on which they sit have come a very long way. And this is another reason why broadcasts are looking more and more like video games. I've heard about something called Sky Camera. Skycam, yes. Skycam was actually developed way back in 2003. And this is a huge first leap at the time to make games look special or unique on television, give you a different perspective than you might've had sitting in the stands. Suddenly the viewer wasn't getting that sidelines angle of the game. They were in on the action immediately above the football being snapped, immediately above the three point jump shot. They were there part of the action much like they would be in a video game. It's no coincidence that a Skycam shot of an NFL football game looks very similar to a screenshot of the video game franchise Madden. Yeah, I've seen unique angles in other sports too. You certainly have. Most sports are using Skycam these days. However, new camera rigs are constantly in development. During the 2020 NBA season, when the NBA was in the bubble, broadcasters wanted to come up with new ways to film the game. They didn't have to worry about fans being in the stands. They had more room to work with. So they developed a courtside tracking shot and fans and front offices alike loved the look of this new shot, this new camera rig. They were really getting inventive with how they could film the game. NBA commissioner Adam Silver even said he wants broadcast to appear more like a Twitch stream, a platform where gamers can live stream their video games. Unique camera angles are popping up more and more, allowing viewers to experience the games through their TV unlike they would if they were at the stadium or the ballpark. These camera angles are actually putting the fans in places they've only ever been able to be in a video game. At this rate, we may find ourselves in the point of view of a quarterback as they're snapping the ball and getting ready to throw. Who knows what will come in the next few years. Another reason for the similarity between broadcasts and video games is the evolution of graphics. Real-time rendering of live graphics has improved vastly over recent years. I always wondered how they got that yellow first down line in football games. Sure, the NFL has been using the first down line since 1998. This was a huge step in on-screen graphics at the time. Now, if we fast forward 25 years, game makers and broadcasters alike are using some of the same graphic rendering engines. Epic Games, the creators of Fortnite, announced that they were using Unreal Engine 5 in early 2022, while Fox Studios had been using Unreal Engine 5 since the year before the same rendering engine for video game companies 
and for broadcast companies. Broadcasters are now also utilizing huge LED screens as part of their sets that they might use at halftime or pregame shows. This is the same method of filming that a show like The Mandalorian uses, where actors or hosts are able to actually see their surroundings instead of how a green screen might operate, where they can't see what's going on around them. These huge LED walls allow them to interact and be lit by their surroundings. They can actually engage with the graphics that are near them. These constant enhancements are bringing our reality into a more virtual space, combining reality with the artificial, making things more like a video game. Graphics are constantly used in live settings. You'll see NHL games where players' names will track along with the players as they're skating at rapid speeds. You'll see these same features in video games like Madden or NHL or MLB The Show. The NFL has even introduced a Nickelodeon version of their games, where you can watch the game and you'll see AR graphics popping up on screen, interacting with the play on the field. A real blending of real life and animation. Graphics are an ever-evolving part of broadcasting, and they continue to bring broadcasting and video games closer and closer. So it's this combination of cameras, camera settings, camera riggings, and graphics that have made the world of live sports that much more like a video game. Surely, over the next decade, we'll see this gap get smaller and smaller. And the onset of AI and virtual reality could take things to an entirely new level. Who knows? You may just find yourself lounging on the couch, purchasing a pair of virtual courtside seats to tonight's NBA game in your town. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll check you back in the next one.